I don't know if you know this, but Instacart is my friend. And in this video, I'm gonna share some insights into maybe Instacart should be your friend as well. Not necessarily all those other food delivery apps like Uber Eats, Grubhub, and DoorDash. So in light of that, let's get started. Hello and welcome. My name is Russ and I'm so glad you found me. I'd like to ponder some thoughts today on Instacart, food delivery, here in California, the minimum wage for the fast food places went up to $20 an hour. And yes, it's maybe say three or $4 higher than it was before. But what's the impact of this on food delivery, on independent contractors, on shopping for Instacart? Let's get into it. So just starting off today, it's been slow and this has been going on for several months now. I wonder why, hmm. Well, anyway, I know I promised before on Grubhub that I was not going to take these really long distance deliveries, but I did. <laughs> and actually, where I'm filming right now is near where I dropped off that first order today. That trip was a total of 27 miles and I earned $21. Not a good move if you're trying to actually make money in the gig economy. Now, in my defense, it was highway miles, but still, I should have hung out and waited for shorter distance, higher paying orders. But I keep having that fear. Am I going to meet my goal today? I always want to make at least $100 during the day. Speaking of which, here's another Instacart. Now, if I wasn't making this video, I would do it $8.97, and it's two items but I'll sacrifice that for you. <laughs> so anyway, that first order put me in this good area where there's a lot of restaurants and stores, but overall it was pretty slow. I ended up doing a couple Uber Eats and a couple Grubhub orders, and that put me right around, I'd say about $40, $45 for two hours of work, not too bad. Then it really started to slow down, and thankfully I had Instacart on, and I ended up getting three batches today. Those batches, most of them were good. One of them was a high item count, but it was to Gelson's, and I know the customers always tip really well. In fact, I ended up getting a total of a $16 tip for those two customers. So while I was dropping off my second Instacart order, I heard that sound of deliver that going off, and I quickly stopped and tried to get in there and see if I can get an order. As you can see, I have my catering bag behind me, but I was too late. So thankfully, my friend Instacart saved the day. After doing that order, I ended up getting that Gelson's order, and that really paid nicely. Then I ended up with another Instacart order, and that put me back here because that drop-off was nearby. So why do I say that Instacart is my friend? That's because I made almost $53. I drove 20 miles total, so that's more than $2 a mile. And I ended up earning roughly $24 an hour. So overall, these orders were very beneficial and a wise use of my time and vehicle. Naturally, I always try to take low item count, low mileage orders, because I know I can get them done really quick. Now that one in the middle, that Gelson's one, that's what took all the time, but it's been slow. So when I had those food delivery orders, roughly $45 in the morning, then nothing. Now to have $53 to round out the day is really nice. So what exactly would California's minimum wage for fast food workers have anything to do with you as an independent contractor? One thing I noticed, I'm always trying to save money when I eat lunch, and I happened to go to Wendy's and I got this bacon stacker thing off the value menu. Total was $5.14. That hamburger was about that big around, which apparently, if you're eating healthy, that's a good food size serving, some small amount not a massive hamburger. So after eating that in about 30 seconds, because that's all there was, I realized, you know what? If all these fast food workers are getting paid $20 an hour, all of them, have you already noticed that food prices have gone up? And especially in fast food restaurants, now that they've raised the minimum wage, I can only imagine that prices are gonna go up even more. So what about companies like DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats? You know, they charge the restaurant and the customer money so they can stay in business. And then part of that money goes to us as the driver for our pay. So if there's inflation, 
high food prices, then you add in this minimum wage boost to supposedly help all the workers. Who's actually going to order the food? Is this why it's been slow these last several months and even now? If you think about it, as a customer, like when I went for my lunch, I didn't even try to get a combo meal or just the regular large burger because it was well over $7. So if I went with the value menu, what does that say for customers? If a majority of them are just getting by and they're doing it for convenience, but now the restaurant prices go up, the Uber Eats, the DoorDash, the Grubhub fees go up, and then finally, you're as the driver expecting a tip. What customer is really gonna sustain this over the long term? As a customer myself, just getting my own food, I don't wanna pay 10, 15, $20 for a meal. That's ridiculous, especially for fast food. So over time, I could see that the increased minimum wage even though people think it's there to help people, it may actually hurt. And as a food delivery driver, we're going to notice that as well because there could be less orders out there because the customers are just not going to be able to afford as much. Now, of course, there's always the extreme, the really wealthy people that are going to order groceries, food delivery, everything because that fits within their budget and it frees them up to use their time to make even more money. So I understand that. But I would think for a majority of people, this isn't the case. And so if the customers can't order as much, then the gig app companies are not going to do as well. The restaurants aren't going to do as well. You know, it's already really tight in labor. Every second counts when you're working any kind of retail fast food place. So now if they're paying more, they're just not going to be able to hire as many people. And then they're really going to feel overworked. The impact on us as independent contractors, we may not get the orders or the orders that we do get, there may not be as high a tips because the customer just can't afford it. So by no means is this the end of the world or something to get really worried about. <laughs> Although I will throw in, I noticed that gas is going for about $5.50 a gallon now. And that's not as bad as it used to be when it was $6 plus, but it's getting there. So another reason I was thinking that Instacart should be your friend, just like it is for me, people always need groceries. They don't need fast food or those kind of services, but they do need groceries to cook at home. So I can see that no matter what happens in the economy, you know, within reason, that people are always going to be out there needing items shop for them. Mostly our groceries on Instacart. But today I did a Petco order and delivered some hamster supplies to a customer. The wind's really picking up here. It's kind of neat. I don't know if you've noticed all the cloudy skies. It's been raining recently and I thought it would be a good day to get out and do some gig work and it was medium busy. But anyway, it's really nice to uh, have the wind blowing, seeing the leaves, the clouds there in the sky. It is kind of nice. That is one of the perks of living in Southern California. Always have beautiful weather, but I digress. So in light of customers always needing food and other items, I could see that Instacart could be a good friend for you too. Now I did forget to mention, typically when you're doing Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, you do put more miles on your car because that's just the nature of the business. The orders are faster because you just go in the restaurant, get it and drive, but you are putting a lot more miles on your car. In general, you do put less miles on your car when you're doing grocery shopping. So who knows, it could be everything with the prices going up, with California raising the minimum wage for the fast food people, or it could mean nothing. You know, there could be a whole bunch of drivers that are coming here from LA because times are tough and they're trying to get orders. As a driver, I'm not actually gonna be able to tell why something appears slow, but I do know when it's slow because it's a long time in between orders and I get worried if I'm gonna meet my goal. So this could be something that you can easily focus on. I do know there is a long wait for Instacart, but sign up now and maybe you can get on there sooner than later. For those that already have Instacart accounts and even shipped accounts, Walmart, Spark, stick with it because I think those kind of services are still gonna be very much needed no matter how much wages or prices go up. 
So if this information has made you think a little bit about it, please do like the channel and like the video. It really helps YouTube get this out to all other drivers and that way they can learn as well. Now, Instacart is just not the best ever, right? Sometimes there's problems. And there is one thing that I've tried a couple times that's worked out most of the time. One time it didn't. You should always be using the Instacart payment but you can use your own credit card should the need arise. But I would caution you, do that sparingly. So in this next video, you can see what happened to me and learn from my expense.